maybe you guys remember me saying I only play multiplayer games. Some of my favorites right now are Valheim, Satisfactory, Rocket League, Conan, and even League of Legends, which I hadn't played in probably 10 plus years. So how do these games do it? As you guys know, we currently plan on supporting eight players in Dimwraith's multiplayer. But could we do more? Well, we've been researching that problem over the last few months, and I'm going to share with you some insights on multiplayer development. Peer to peer. Some games utilize a peer to peer architecture. This is where every computer talks with every other computer to share the load of processing network related information. Age of Empires 2 and Warcraft 3 were both games that were coded in this way. One major problem with this design is that the more people that connect, the amount of connections in the mesh increases exponentially, and in the case of Age of Empires 2, would cause the game to freeze up as more and more units were spawned in the game. Then there's a client-server model, where all computers communicate directly with just one computer, the server. Now the server could be running on one of the computers of the players in the game. We call that the host. The host is essentially running both the server code and the client simultaneously. And in fact, the client is actually connecting to its own computer. So to the server code, it looks just like the other clients connecting over the internet. This is how Dimwraith is coded right now. For some games, running the client and the server simultaneously on the same computer may not be ideal. In this situation, developers will create a separate build of the game that only runs the server code. We call that dedicated server. Generally, dedicated servers run in the cloud these days, where no players are required to be connected for the server to keep running. But of course, you can run a dedicated server on your own computer and then spin up the client version of the game and simply connect to yourself. An important distinction here is that you might think that running a dedicated server plus the game client is the same thing as hosting. After all, in both cases, your computer is handling the server code and the client code simultaneously. However, there is a big difference. Big difference. And that's because when you host a game, the server code and the client code are sharing one of your CPU cores for both of their processing. Whereas a dedicated server is a completely separate application, and so it can utilize its own CPU core. So performance is much better with a dedicated server build. But unless you're going to have more than say eight players, most people aren't going to wanna to run a separate version of the game. So it's more convenient to play as a host in that case. Now, some games actually support both host and dedicated servers like V-Rising, Minecraft, and Valheim. So at this point, you're probably thinking, duh, Joseph, just create a client host version of the game and a dedicated server build of the game. Easy, right? Super easy. Wrong. <laughs> there are a number of things we have to consider here. If we were to focus on getting a dedicated server build out there, not only would that increase the development time before our game actually hits the market, but there are many features and game design decisions that would have to reflect that option. Players may immediately want features like clans or guilds, a focus on PvP, and most importantly, server-side authority. Server-side authority versus client-side authority makes a huge, huge difference in your gaming experience. With client-side authority, every computer basically does an action locally on their computer and then tells the server that they did that action. But with server-side authority, the client is requesting from the server to do that same action. Let's take League of Legends as an example. That is a highly competitive game that is full server authority. This means that when players move, cast a spell, purchase items, auto attack, etc., all of that is happening on the server. If a player with a 10 millisecond ping casts a killing blow to another player, and that other player also casts a killing blow, but he has a ping of 100 milliseconds, the client with the lower latency is going to get his request fulfilled on the server before the other player. By the time the 100 millisecond player's killing blow gets to the server, the server simply rejects that information because the player is already dead. And this is why Riot Games has a network infrastructure called Riot Direct, which helps give players the fastest possible paths over the internet to their servers. They do this because the internet providers actually route traffic based on the cheapest cost, not the fastest route. But we'll save that discussion for another time. If a competitive game were to use client-side authority, you would see players cheating left and right because all they'd have to do is modify their client to send false information to the server and the server would accept it. Now, even with full server-side authority, it's not impossible to find ways to trick the server into believing false information. And that's why Riot went so far as to make players install Vanguard, which has the highest level access to the player's computer. So any type of client-side cheating is probably gonna get detected. As much as people hated the Vanguard solution, let's look at an example of a game that is the flip side of that, GTA 5. Unbelievably, GTA 5 created their game as client-side authority. And in fact, it's not even a server-client model. It uses the peer-to-peer -peer model that I showed you at the beginning of the video. 
The only difference is that their peer-to-peer -peer relays through one of their servers so that clients don't actually know each other's IP information. This is why anytime you play GTA 5, it's only a matter of time before a modder enters the same session and starts making it rain cash, spawning in five dozen Boeing 747s and killing you over and over and over again. Needless to say, I have permanently retired from GTA 5 and GTA 6 will be a wash for me if they don't fix that. Okay, so at this point, we know that players are going to expect more server-side authority as the amount of players grows, but the player's visual experience is actually better with client-side authority. So what do we do? Dimwraith so far has tried to make certain systems client-side authority, like movement, animations, and position, while damage, scene transitions, NPC conversations, and others happen on the server. I think focusing on making a game compatible with any situation before verifying players actually like the base game is not a good use of development time. Our goal is that players like the eight player multiplayer, and if we're successful one day and players demand larger servers, then we can pivot to dedicated server development. We may also start off by making the eight player restriction a soft limit, like Satisfactory does it. That means you can actually try to connect as many people as you want, but we're only officially supporting the eight player limit. The final consideration for planning out the multiplayer scaling is the performance. You all may have seen games that have weird limitations, where you can't get too far from the host or can only load into the same scene as the host, and a lot of times that's because when the server is tracking players in separate scenes, with separate monsters, with separate network objects, it only gets more complicated, and the host can take a huge performance hit. The games with these restrictions can generally be classified into three categories. Number one, camera locked. Streets of Rage is a good example of a camera lock game where all players are restricted to the same camera view. And if one player stays on the left side of the screen, then nobody can move the camera towards the right. Then you have games that are scene locked. I remember playing the first Borderlands online where players had to always be on the same level together. This was particularly important because you could really only play with people who were strong enough to fight the same difficulty of monsters as you. And finally comes the last category, tethering. That could come in the form of the camera growing in size to show both players, like in Fable 2, or it could just be a set distance like in Ark, where the players get a flashing red screen until they get closer to the host. What's interesting is that in the dedicated server version of Ark, there is no tethering limitation. Okay, so let's talk about how we're improving the performance of Dimwraith. We've spent a lot of time benchmarking new scene prototypes that incorporate chunking, spreading updates over many frames, turning off scripts when the camera does not see objects, using Unity's job system, and many other things. This this gives us the best chance to be able to exceed the 8 player limitation in the future. There is a Unity architecture called Dots that some of you may be aware of that can speed up code by even a hundred times. I had watched a Unity video where they interviewed the developers of VRising and actually showed how they were able to use Dots to get their game performance to be able to support 40 plus players. After that, I watched a course on Dots that CodeMonkey recently created. Unfortunately for me, it looks like sprite renders are not supported by Dots yet, but with a top-down pixel art game, I don't know that we need to go to the extremes that VRising did. If you guys enjoyed this video or learned something new, give this video a like and let me know in the comment section what multiplayer games you guys have had a bad experience with. If you want to take part in our community, consider joining our Discord where we cover a number of gaming topics. Well guys, that wraps up this video. I know we didn't get to show a lot of new features and visuals of Dimwraith, but I promise in the next couple devlogs, we have some great stuff planned to show you. Thank you all for watching and I will see you all in the next one.